Aloha! I give you that laid-back greeting because today we'll be discussing a term that you often hear on a beach. Flip-flops. Yes, flip-flops are a type of sandal, but it does have another common English usage. It is used to describe someone who changes their opinion. You may, for example, say that a politician repeatedly flip-flops on her opinions. This means that at one time she is in favor of a policy, then she's against it, then she's for it. Keep that idea in mind, because it also describes what flip-flop circuits do. They bounce back and forth between states. Flip-flops are synchronous, bistable devices. What does this mean? Stable means that a flip-flop can hold a state as long as it is not instructed to change, and also as long as power is connected. Bistable means there are two stable states. Reset is the name for a held zero. Set is the name for a held one. Synchronous means that a flip-flop changes in response to the clock. It can only switch states at specific times. As discussed in a previous video, a digital clock waveform is any square waveform that is periodic, meaning that it repeats at regular intervals. In fact, this connection to the clock is the only difference between a flip-flop and a gated latch. A gated latch is also bistable, but its ability to change is determined by an independent enable signal. Think of it as a manual switch. For a flip-flop, the enable is the appropriate edge of a clock pulse. We'll discuss six types of flip-flops in this course, all of whose block diagrams are shown here. The difference between the top and bottom rows is one little empty bubble before this triangle symbol. What does this mean? The triangle symbol is called the dynamic input indicator. It is where the clock input would feed in. A bubble before it shows that the flip-flop is negative edge triggered. No bubble shows that the flip-flop is positive edge triggered. Positive edge triggered means that the flip-flop can only change at the instant when a clock jumps from low to high, or zero to one, such as these points on the waveform. Important note, this is not the same thing as saying the flip-flop can change while the clock is high. That would mean the flip-flop could change for a long period of time. No, it is only for a very brief sliver of time, right as the clock jumps from low to high. Conversely, negative edge triggered means that the flip-flop can only change when the clock drops from high to low, such as these points on the waveform. That explains the difference between the top and bottom rows on this slide. The columns are labeled D, J, K, and T. These are different types of flip-flops in terms of their instruction inputs. Notice that T and D flip-flops have just one instruction input, while J, K has two. Every flip-flop has the same outputs, Q and Q prime. In reality, these provide just one piece of information. By definition, Q and Q prime are always complements of each other. If Q equals 1, then Q prime must equal 0. If Q equals 0, then Q prime must equal 1. Why two outputs then? Well, when we explore the gate schematics later, you'll see that a Q prime wire is necessary internally as part of the latch setup. Since that wire is already there, it is convenient to use that output as well. Note that a fourth category of flip-flop does exist. It's called the SR flip-flop and it has similar instructions to the SR latch discussed previously. However, the JK flip-flop is a more capable version of it. So that type will be explored here. In the following slides, we'll see the operation of each of these types of flip-flops. D flip-flops, like D latches, have a very simple instruction command. The output Q will simply take on the input D value, but it must wait until the appropriate edge of a clock pulse occurs. First, we see a positive edge triggered D flip-flop. Its characteristic table is shown up top. Note that I am careful to not say truth table. Truth table should be used for combinational circuits, not sequential circuits. In this characteristic table, 
The inputs are the clock behavior and the D command. The outputs of the flip-flop are Q and Q prime, which are always complements of each other. The subscript is important. It is written as T plus one. This should be interpreted with the phrase at the next clock pulse. In this case, that is the next positive edge because of the up arrows in the clock column. The subscripts express the heart of flip-flops. We provide the instructions now, but they are not processed until the next clock pulse. As for those instructions, when D equals zero, the flip-flop is in reset mode, which means that Q will equal zero. When D equals one, the flip-flop is in set mode, which means that Q will equal one. This behavior is summarized succinctly in the characteristic equation written here, which says that the next Q output will equal the current D input. Let's see this in action on a timing diagram. Here we see the input clock in D command, as well as the output Q. At first, we actually don't know the initial value of Q, which is why we see a question mark here. But that changes on the first positive edge of the clock. At this time, the flip-flop accepts the command of D equals zero, and so Q equals zero. From there, the output is guaranteed to not change until the next positive edge. It is convenient that I drew in these vertical lines to help us see when that is. At this next enabled time, D equals zero, so Q remains low. Now we wait, wait, wait until the next positive edge. Here, D equals one, so Q jumps to a high value. And this pattern continues on for the remainder of the time. Q only responds to instructions at the positive edges. This can really be seen by looking at the points where D changes. First, D jumps here, but the change in the output is not sensed until the next positive edge. Similarly, D drops low here, but Q doesn't drop until a little later. And over on the right, D has a blip where it jumps high and then quickly low. This doesn't impact Q at all because it missed the positive clock pulse. Now let's look at a negative edge trigger D flip-flop. The only change in the device symbol is this bubble in front of the clock input. This has drastic effects on the behavior of the flip-flop. Now on the timing diagram, we focus on the negative edges. Look at this point in the middle. D becomes zero immediately after the negative edge. Close, but no call. The instruction processed at this vertical line is D equals one, so Q remains one. Similarly, this blip on D is important now because it covers that negative edge. Now Q responds to that instruction and jumps high. Let's stop this video here. In the next one, I'll show similar examples for JK and T flip-flops. When we get to those, the instructions or modes will change but this fundamental fact will remain. Flip-flops can only change states on the appropriate edges of the clock waveform.